I can only imagine what the brave ben uh, Bangladeshi patriots would feel as they looked at the repression under which so many Bangladeshis live today. Repression that there is patriots sacrificed their lives to overcome. Repression that is now thrust upon the Bangladeshi people, not by a foreign land, but by their own leaders. That repression takes many forms. First and foremost, the government has attacked free expression. It has imprisoned journalists, censored newspapers, and closed television networks. Again and again, government officials retaliate against critics by launching deliberate and sustained smear campaigns, typically including false accusations aimed at tarnishing reputations and threatening activists and their families. Law enforcement is arbitrary and capricious. Justice isn't simply delayed, it's completely denied. Security forces act with impunity. Disappearances and extrajudicial killings go unsolved. Abuse and torture are routine. Prosecutions can be politically motivated, and only the most courageous judges act independently. Repression has come at the wellspring of democracy itself, the ballot box, where elections are anything but free and fair. It is easy to submit to a sense of futility. The belief there is nothing one person can do in the face of such widespread corruption, consolidation of power, and violent suppression. But when you meet a deal, you are reminded that the human spirit is capable of soaring, even under the worst of circumstances. Without any regard to his personal safety, a deal has worked to ensure that the dream born with independence in 1971 does not wither on the vine. Adil Rahman Khan founded Odikar, which means rights in Bangla, in 1994 with a group of civil society activists that included his uncompromising and courageous wife and partner, Saira. Outraged by the failure of one government after another to guarantee basic rights, Adil and his colleagues took on the challenge of investigating abuses writing, publishing, and disseminating meticulously researched, detailed, reliable reports, and advocating for a vibrant democracy that answered to all of Bangladesh's people. Not surprisingly, Odikar efforts have earned a deal and his team severe retribution. They've been under constant surveillance since 2000. Their cell phones are monitored, Government agents stand outside of Odikar's headquarters. Even after government agents threatened the staff, cut off the funding, shut down the offices, Adil and his team, undaunted, continued their fight for justice. Then, in the summer of 2013, after years of surveillance and harassment, the Bangladeshi government struck against Adil himself. In May of 2013, Odikar released a report documenting the role of government security forces in the massacre of 61 peaceful protesters. In retaliation for documenting extrajudicial executions, the government disappeared a deal. On August 10th, a deal returned home with his wife and two young children to find a dozen men in plain clothes waiting for him. They said they were police and shoved him into a waiting vehicle, but they had no warrant. They refused to show any identification, and they, and they wouldn't say they were, where they were taking him or why. The vehicle itself had the name of a bank emblazoned on the side. Keenly aware that at least 160 people have been disappeared since 2009, Adil's family feared they would never see him again. When Syra contacted the police, they lied and said they knew nothing about his arrest. Even after the news media reported that he had been arrested, the government still refused to say why. A deal was finally brought before a judge the following afternoon. It was only then that he learned he was being charged with publishing false images and information and disrupting the law and order situation of the country. A reference, of course, to Odikar's report on the extrajudicial killings. The prosecutors asked that a deal be held directly in police custody for five days, which in Bangladesh is practically a guarantee of torture. It was only because a deal is so respected by the judiciary and hundreds of lawyers from Bangladesh and across the globe came to his defense that the Supreme Court intervened. 
Still, a deal spent 62 days in a filthy, bug-infested, overcrowded cell before bail was granted in October 2013. Throughout his detention, the government-affiliated media conducted a syst systemic smear campaign against his name. The government has continued to closely follow a deal while he has been free on bail. He must get permission from authorities to travel, and even when he does, he can expect to be harassed and treated with contempt. Just this week, even though the U.S. ambassador had informed authorities that a deal was traveling to Washington to receive the Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Award at the United States Senate, they still chose to detain him, interrogate him, and cause him to almost miss his flight. That's daily fare for a man like Adil. When he returns home, Adil will attend a hearing to determine whether he will have to stand trial, facing up to 10 years in prison, simply for exposing the truth. Throughout all these ordeals, Adil and his colleagues have remained undaunted. They believe in a free Bangladesh, and they are determined that a free Bangladesh will prevail. Robert Kennedy said, those with the courage to enter the moral conflict will find themselves with companions in every corner of the globe. Adil, time and again, you've inspired us with your courage. Today, as we present you with this award and enter a new partnership together, I hope that you will consider everyone in this room a companion in your struggle for justice. Thank you.